Hey James, I just watched your videos in reverse order. Uh, and if this thing auto focuses, I, sorry, I haven't messed with that too much. So firstly, nice. I agree a lot. Uh, yes, cooking, currency, sharing currency with people or sharing wealth with people is a fucking ticket. And, and, and sharing food, actually a friend of mine, because I do, I live in a giant apartment complex on like Wilshire in, uh, in LA. And last, I, I made some, this, these amazing lentils with all these, you know, I basically used almost every ingredient here. And uh, Jesus came over last night and uh, had a bunch. He kept telling me how much he loved my cooking and then I gave him some food to go. But I've been like fantasizing about going over to my friend's house and making pizza. Because I love making pizza. Look at all this shit, dude. This has been my last couple days. Um, hold on, I'm gonna flip this around. Can I do that? I think it, I'm not gonna mess with it. Um, but you've, uh, you've inspired me to go outside, so I'm gonna go outside up on my roof. So this is my front door leading out to my hallway, which just goes out to the beautiful fire escape over there. And uh, we'll go upstairs. Okay, I've been thinking a lot about this. I actually just talked to my brother, Max, uh, last night about it because he called me and we were going on about, you know, the dire situation, the need for movement and action and transparency or whatever. But I think I primarily realized that in order to speed up, we have to slow down. So it's a lot like traction, uh, like wheels catching traction on a road. You can't just put the pedal down. You can never just put the pedal down. You'll just spin out. I mean, I don't think maybe there's a specialized situation where you can, but for the most part, you have to ease into it. So when I look at assimilating into culture as we know it, like this whole fucking system, man, I mean, this, this has been calling to me my whole life, being an entertainer on stage and film. And it is a little bullshit. Like this is more real. I like this a lot better, but God, but the pay, I mean, it's no joke, dude. I, I live in an apartment that if I don't have money, I'll be kicked out. And then I, I won't have my internet for my computer, my big dual monitor machine that I use to edit and to, you know, game and make videos and talk to my friends on Skype. You know, there's always a way mobily, but I, won't, I wouldn't have my roof to make movies on. Like we're shooting a, a movie in a couple weeks up here, or like doing a film shoot. So there's something to being, being, being wealthy, but then there's that fear that comes along with losing it. And that's, I don't like that. I don't want that. I don't have that for the most part. I'm, I'm pretty willing to give it all away. But the whole easing into it is what I, is like, recently I've really come into kind of accepting and even becoming, becoming excited again about, about acting. You know, creating, a crazy guy just to do it. It's easy, it's fun, it's relaxing, and it's rewarding. And people seem to like me when I do it. They seem to want more of it. And they're like, hey, Ian, you actually have something to offer. Because when you think about creating something, like I'm, I'm thinking like, what does an actor really do? It's kind of a waste, like compared to like Elon Musk or someone that builds infrastructure. You could say, take like Robert De Niro and then a guy that builds like uh, a magnetic train across the country. The guy that built the train built something legit. When he's done, he's gone. What he did is actually helping people on a physical level every day. Robert De Niro, however, just talked a lot. But the reality is words, thoughts, feelings are physical. Whether or not it's dark matter, which I think it is, that we're creating clouds of dark matter with our ideas, it creates emotions and it changes your physiology. So actors really are creating physical substance. And in that leaving something rewarding for people, I guess it rained up here. I like this. I'm not used to it being all wet up here. So I'm kind of watching where I'm walking. So I think that I can offer a creative substance in that regard, as opposed to worrying so much about building the tech. You know, this is building. We're building something right now. This 
mean, it's just killing the mic, isn't it? <sighs> okay, wind. I think you're right that what we need is already here. And okay, so so are you going to vote in the upcoming election? Or did you are would you? Are you going to? I I'm like going to vote for Hillary Clinton because I don't want Donald Trump to be president and I don't want to vote for Hillary Clinton. So I don't want to vote for Hillary Clinton. So I don't know if I'm going to, but I keep I I was just like accepting it that it doesn't really matter who the president is i mean it kind of matters but it only kind of matters in that like who lives next door to me i mean it kind of matters but not really you know if, if 60 million people go march on washington it doesn't really matter who the president is yeah i mean it, 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 it matters in that if you have some stupid ass insane dumbass, they might be resistant they might be like make them stop and someone really prolific and evolved would be like, this is great, this is what we need. More, more people. Bring another 60 million people. Let's get this going. So in order to really uh, change the Constitution of the United States, we need about half the population on our side. God, I knew the wind was going to be up here. And every time I say the word wind, I feel like it creates more wind stillness. there's a helicopter pad on that building up there but no it's that building up there can you see it but I've never seen a helicopter land on it so maybe maybe it's not a helicopter pad I, don't know. I watched your two videos backwards the second the first video which was your second video was more intense and, and, and kind of like the warning you know the warning sign the alarm the alarm I mean I know what that feeling is like but what I've experienced over the last few years, over the last seven years, to be honest, the calmer I am, the more relaxed I am, and the more I'm enjoying what I'm, my moments, the more the people want to be around me, the more the people listen to what I'm saying, the more the people believe what I'm saying, and the more agitated I get, the less people want to be around me, the less people want to listen to me, the less, the less effective my videos are, my point of view becomes, you know, convoluted or corrupted or tainted, I don't know the right word, with anger or whatever, with agitation, unnecessary agitation. It's that slowing down to speed up, man. It's, the, it's this irony that we all have to, to come to. But it's at the same time, if you put your hand on a hot stove, you don't slowly take it away. You get it the fuck out of there. And in a lot of ways, that's where we're at right now. But in a lot of ways, that's not the way we're at because I'm not touching a hot stove. Yeah, the earth is heating up. I know the Great Barrier Reef is dying. You know, it's it's suffocating on the, the fucking acidity of the ocean. But we can fix that by putting iron into the ocean. That's not going to happen right now. And if I get angry about it, it's not going to make it happen any faster. And like, I think about making movies and the last six years I've held off because I'm like I don't want to waste my time but then I look at the last six years and what have I fucking done I could have been you know it only takes four months to get a movie done so if I'm going to be here anyway might as well be getting as much public attention as possible for the cause Okay, I like your, your base idea of making dinner for people. And this is like, this is one of my favorite things in the world. Just spice it up. Cumin. Oregano. Cilantro. Dice a few tomatoes. Base it with lentils. Maybe even put a little bit of banana in there. They won't even know it's there. Dash it with some cinnamon. Too salty to notice. Little, little red wine that's, that's soured. 
that burns off really fast. Yeah. Okay. All right. I feel like I've, I, I missed some point that I wanted to make based on something you said in the second video, but I think that we're on the same level, man. So if you want to hang out and talk more, let's do that. Oh, I like how you were pausing the video and then and then unpausing it. That's a good feature. The, the duality of life, you know, the simplicity and calmness of what I have right now, knowing that on the other side of the world there's chaos and upheaval. It's really, really, really weird, really crazy. I know that living in a state of worry doesn't make you healthy. Living in a state of isolated bliss doesn't make you happy, you know. Uh, had a kind of a revelation the other day that pleasure, I think Dan Blazarian was saying this on Joe Rogan podcast, pleasure and happiness are two different things and you can buy pleasure. But happiness is up to you. And that goes beyond what this physical body is getting. This is like every, everything. I'm not happy that those cars are spewing carbon. The first time I left LA, it was because it smelled like carbon. But now being up on the sixth floor, with trees outside my window, I don't smell it every day and it's, I'm not inundated with it. But I know, it doesn't make me happy to know that these cars, I mean, look at how many cars there are. What? talk to you later, man.